Hey everyone, and welcome to today's daily. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at Fnatic Reckless as he plays Jin with an Alistar support against Zaya and Tom. The AD carries have similar range, the Zaya and Tom will be able to outpush at level 1 due to Tom's threatening Q poke and how useless Alistar is at level 1 before he has combo. This lane is interesting to watch from level 2 onwards, however, because of all of the different interactions involving Tom Kench. Alistar and Jin have to be careful about overcommitting onto Zaya and have to aim their trades when she's either out of range for Tom to eat her or when they can CC both of the targets. However, if they're able to take quick trades or if the Alistar can knock them both up at the same time, then there's a lot of potential for Reckless to come out on top here. However, the bottom line here is that Jin is one of the worst AD carries right now, where Zaya is one of the best AD carries, which means that we're going to have to see Reckless show why he's one of the best marksmen around. Looking at the goals for this lane, Reckless is going to want to keep the wave away from his turret. This is because Jin has a harder time farming effectively under turret, and you'd rather want to use the spell mana for pushing or harassing. Because he's playing with an Alistar, he has to be careful about getting 1v2 to level 1. If he can make it to level 2 without taking too much damage or losing complete control of the lane, that'll be great. However, the most likely situation is that he'll be, he'll be forced to give up control of the lane until Alistar hits level 2. When the wave is in good spots, he'll look to harass with his Q and his 4th shot, then running backwards with the extra movement speed. If Alistar ever goes in, Reckless will be able to follow up on the CC with his W. Overall, this is a high skill matchup where we'll be really focusing on the nuances of the minions and how Reckless is positioning and deciding to use his spells. As we hop in, we can see that Reckless and Alistar didn't have to leash. If the enemy bot lane has to leash, this will be amazing for getting to level 2 quickly and avoiding Alistar's level 1 power trough. However, life always isn't that easy and the enemy bot lane hasn't had to leash either. Remember, if you're a jungler, try to start on the top side so that your bottom lane can be in this position. Anyway, right off the bat, Reckless cues the wave and starts autoing. He wants to clear out the wave and try to keep it in the middle here, where he isn't pushing too far into their territory while also getting closer to level 2. Alistar goes a bit far up and is taking damage here, but that will even out due to the minion aggro on Zaya and Tom. We're also seeing a lot of Q spam on the wave, and though he would love to get all of these minions, the main priority he has is to get level 2 at the same time or ahead of Zaya and Tom Couch. We're also seeing that Reckless has handled Tom's aggression really well by not allowing him to close in for auto attacks and proc his Glacial Augment. Reckless clears the last of the first wave with a Q and Lance Harass, which is great, and now he's just 3 minions away from level 2. This, combined with the small health lead that he has on Zaya, means that he's in an excellent position so far in this lane. Here Reckless has perfect positioning. He's keeping minions between him and Tom to prevent Q Harass, and he's backing Alistar up to go for the Relic Execute. Going for relic stacks is visually obvious on Alistar, among other melee champions, and when Zaya predictably tries to get an auto onto Alistar, Reckless steps forward to get an unpowered auto in response. This is a perfect trade, and you can replicate it in your own games by stepping up when your support goes for Targon stacks. At this point, Reckless has a 200 health lead on Zaya and just has to match her level 2. He gets level 2 and another shot onto Tom. He got the shot onto Tom because he made it look like he'd used the final shot on the melee, but instead walked further to the right and closed the distance for more auto attack harass. These little outplays are really differentiating Reckless from his challenger opponents. Whenever he has his final shot, he dances aggressively forward to threaten Zaya to take a bad trade. If he ever hits his fourth shot, he'll run immediately backward. You'll also want to notice the wave positioning here. Reckless could be pushing into the turret off of the back of his health lead, but that would make Alistar useless. With the wave right here, just off center, Alistar can still freely combo the enemy players without being near the turret. If Alistar were instead a ranged poke champion, Reckless would likely be playing more aggressively by pushing up to the turret and looking for more harassment and structure damage. Here there's a fight in the river where Alistar has priority, but Zaya and Tom beat Reckless on their own. He follows, but he's just out of range of any possible turn from Zaya and Tom. It's also important to notice that if this ward wasn't here, then Reckless's approach to the river would be much more careful, likely taking more time and hugging this wall on the left. In any case, everyone turns back to the lane, and there's a big red wave forming. Jin really wants to thin this out, because as we said earlier, Jin has a hard time clearing under the turret. He clears out the wave with some Qs, and plays carefully around the Zaya and Tom poke. Once he has the wave more equalized and gets his fourth shot, he moves up for harass. 
Again, it's really hard for Tom to do anything against him with the minions between them, and he has the slight range advantage on Zaya, which means that he'll always get the first auto if he plays it right. Here a 2v2 happens, and we'll watch it, then go back and break it down. Whenever you see this on Alistar, you're probably going to go in. Unfortunately, he doesn't get the full combo onto Tom, which is a little bit inefficient. Maybe it was to try and get the stun on Zaya before Tom could devour her, but we think it's just better to full combo both of them instead of knocking Tom away. Anyway, the full focus is on Zaya, though Tom still does plenty of damage. Reckless takes a half step back so Tom can't auto him, because he wants to prevent the stacks from getting onto him for as long as possible. Once Zaya commits her flash, that's unlocked Reckless to commit his. Because he's on a low mobility champion, he wanted to wait this long before flashing so that he couldn't flash away from him because Tom would just eat and kill him. While killing the enemy AD carry normally wins the fight, Tom does a lot of damage in 1v1s, but it's really reliant on his Q landing. With that in mind, Reckless immediately moves into the minions where it's really hard for Tom to maneuver. This genius move has brought the fight in his favor, but it's not over yet. He has to balance keeping Tom interested while keeping space between them as the Devourer comes back up. This last W seals the deal as the stacks fall off Reckless and he's now in the clear to chase Tom and finish him off. He chases him down to land the Q and barely catches up with his 5 move speed advantage. After he recalls, picks up a serrated dirk, longsword, and refillable pot, he's in contrast to Zaya's berserker greaves. As both AD carries come back into the lane, there isn't much vision for either side. However, Reckless doesn't have to worry about it because he has Sejuani in his back pocket. Even still, when you have a big bot lane fight where all of the summoners are burnt, know that the mid laners and the junglers will have a target on your head. In this case, Zaya hadn't been thinking about this idea as much because her vision ward is still up in her inventory and could be placed in the tri brush or the bot side blue brush. Instead, Sajuani has been allowed to creep up to this point where she is going to get an easy engage onto Tom Kench. Quick note as we see Alistar Hex flash in here, Tom Kench is a lot like Thresh in that you want to target him over his AD carry because they both have the same capability to save their lane partner. Even though they layer the CC well here, Tom and Zaya still get off a lot of damage and things are starting to look scary as a teleport comes in from Camille. As Reckless here, your goal is to run away as fast as you can, using W to try and buy space for you and your team. On the other side of the lane, Rednecton's teleport has finally come in and he's joined the fight. This takes some pressure off of Reckless so he can again step forward into the fight. The battle has been going really well for Reckless and Renekton, however Quirky appears at the end and has taken a smart path to minimize vision on him from the Lotus Blossom in the river. At this point, it's clear that Reckless is going to die, so whatever that happens, you want to make sure that you can put out as much damage as possible and waste whatever time you can so that your allies, like this Renekton, can clean up the rest of the fight. In the end, this minute long fight ended 4 kills to 4, with Blue Side barely coming out on top due to a Nivea getting free farm in the mid lane. After cleaning up the overextended Quirky with Alistar, Reckless cleans up the wave and is up over a thousand gold and nearly a level of XP over the enemy Zaya. He got to this point with great harassment in lane, and playing around his weak points which were his support at level 1 and his lack of turret clearing. As the lane went on, he got a lot of 4th shots onto Zaya and Tom by timing it on minion hits or doing small, unexpected movements to get into range. He was able to keep the wave near the center by consistently using his Qs to match Zaya's wave clear, and was able to pick up kills and fights by playing on the outskirts until he absolutely had to dive in for the kill. In the end, both bot lanes played consistently well. The difference maker here was that Reckless's play was a little bit more crisp to his decision making and his champion mechanics, and that separated him from his opponents. If you're looking to apply these things in your own games, rewind the video and watch the exact way that he moved his character. Try to mirror similar crisp movements in a custom game against dummies, and do the same move set at least 5 times. This will start to build muscle memory, and when it comes to a real game, it'll be that much easier for you to move the same way. That's it for this one guys, thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.